well. Another early start this morning and uh, made all the more difficult today because it's starting to get a little bit chilly. Um, but I'm going to the same piece of ground where I went to in uh, last month's episode. Um, you may remember I saw a few roe deer there. Well, uh, I, um, I went down there again yesterday and I was actually set out and look, see if I could uh, catch up with the fox I've been after down there. And again, I saw the roe deer come out in the evening, uh, just at last light there. And um, again, I saw there was quite a nice buck there, or a reasonable buck there. Now, I supply venison for a local restaurant, and uh, they've just asked me for some more venison. So uh, that, um, that little roe buck would be ideal for that. This bit of ground's quite difficult to shoot over. It's fairly flat. There's a main road that runs through along the bottom of the uh, of the fields. Quite a bit back, but it's it's there nonetheless. And there's also a few houses uh, and a field with some some horses in. So you kind of sort of need to walk down down into the the fields and be right on where the row are usually out and about, and then kind of shoot back towards the woods. Just don't get light, so it needs to be a bit quick. Before I go too far, I'm just going to uh, put a few rounds in the magazine and uh, put the night vision on. Um, it's still a bit too dark to shoot anything at the moment, but I'll put it on there, not for the deer, but um, just in case I bump into a fox anywhere around before I get to where I want to be. So again this morning I'm using the PARD 007, it's the SP um, 007, the newer version, a little short one. That should just slide on the back of the scope, like so. Put it up, lock it down. Easy as that, converting your day scope into a night vision unit. Ideal, right. Weather's not brilliant this morning. We've got a storm coming in and that wind's picking up. It's probably going to be the last dry morning for a little while, so I'm going to make the most of it. Hopefully, we'll find a deer. Is the uh, the row that I spotted a bit further up the field? They're laid up behind the hedge just in front of me here, and a bit further down. So I think they're keeping out the wind. But the problem is the boundary to the farm is at the bottom there, and the hedge is just really thick all the way down. There's nowhere that I can um, see through to get a shot. And I can't shoot that way. So the only thing I can do is just try and go through the hedge. And, uh, well, I the hope that somehow I've got a safe shot down there because there's houses and things down that way so it makes it very difficult to shoot. But if they're close, I might be able to get a safe shot that way. Failing that, they might run out into the field and stop and give me a chance further out because they'll probably head for a big wood right opposite me. So I'm just going to see if I can sneak through here and have a look and see what they're doing.
that was an unexpected result. So the row were just, just down here and they bolted out across the field and they didn't give me an opportunity for a shot there. But as it happens, there was a, a pretty good um, fallow buck that was right out down the bottom there. And I'd pretty much just given up on him because he was walking round to the bottom of the big wood just opposite there. And I kind of thought, well, if I can knock a row over here, then I might even get a chance to stalk him through that wood and see if I can find that, that fallow as well. But as it happened, the row running across this field obviously caught that fallow buck's eye and he came running this way and stopped. He was a fair distance out, I think he was about 220, 230 metres. I'll, um, I'll range it back from, uh, from where we are at the moment. So he just stopped and stood broadside perfectly for me. So I just gave it a little bit extra on the, uh, on the sort of the elevation if you like, just gave it a little bit of holdover and um, sent it around down there and he's gone over about another 30 yards out in the field. So that's brilliant, that's the easy part done. Now comes the hard bit. I've got to get that out and um, a lot of these fields here have all been cut and churned up a little bit so it might be a bit interesting getting the truck over here. So I might have to drag it a bit of the way but we'll see. Let's go and have a look at him anyway. I've done a good job there of putting the bullet where I wanted it to be, straight in the engine room. And he was he was actually uh, a fair distance, it's about 255 metres from here. He ran, I would have said, well looking at he probably ran about 50 metres before he went over. So if you said 200 metres, about 220 yards, 230 yards, somewhere about there, I think he probably would have been at. Right, well, I'm going to uh, get him cleaned out and um, figure out how the hell I'm going to get him out of here. <laughs> i tell you what, if you want a decent knife made, look at this beauty. This was made for me by a guy called uh, Guy, funny enough, Guy Stainthorpe. And um, I mean, it's just a work of art. Look at that, just his craftsmanship, razor sharp edge to it. So if you want a decent stalking knife, or just to treat yourself to something nice, look that guy up, you find him on Facebook, Guy Stainthorpe. It's well for this. <laughs> well, as you can probably hear, it's a bit damp out. Um, I've just been having a little wander around for an hour, hour and a half, knocking over a few rabbits. The farmer here's got several little pockets of rabbits dotted around on this flat bit of ground. It's quite a nice bit of ground actually, because although it's flat, there's a, there's a steep bank at the back. So you can get some quite sort of nice long shots out there. I've had shots this evening from between, I think the closest few were about 30 or 40 yards. Um, and the furthest one was 220, so it's not too bad a, a stretch with a with a little 2-2. That's just using subs, Winchester subs. And um, that's a B14R, Bagara B14R, the rifle, sports match mounts, uh, Element Titan, uh, 3 to 18 by 50 scope on there and just using the PAR 007 NV add-on. So I'm just going to sit in the truck for a bit, let the worst of the weather pass over and, uh, and head out have a look for a fox.
comes the rain again. Got the uh, Mauser 243 out again this evening. Quite like this little rifle. It um, certainly seems to be uh, knocking stuff over well. It's got the um, Element uh, Helix HDLR. 2 to 16 by 50 scope on there, sports match quick release mounts as always, and the PARD 007 SP and uh, the Illuminator sat on the top there on the Wicked Light mount, and of course, recon tripod. Oh, and not forgetting the uh, Geminis, these are the infrared Gemini thermal binoculars. Fox down. He must have been between 130 and 160 metres. I was just about to pack up and go as well. <laughs> Literally just turned around. He was coming across the field just behind me. And he came right in behind the, uh, the hedge just here. So I just stood still for a minute and waited. And then he, I saw him come through and he was kind of further up the field. And uh, by the time I got onto him, I think he knew that I was here and he was going off heading towards that wood. And uh, I'll just give him a little uh, a little squeak or a shout, I can't remember now, squeak I think. And he just um, turned and looked and bosh, knocked him down. Right, let's go and get him. Right, well, I'm pleased to have got that fox. Hopefully that was the, uh, the one I've been after. But uh, anyway, this rain seems to be um, getting uh, getting heavier so I'm going to knock it on the head but I hope you enjoyed the episode thanks for watching and please subscribe <laughs>